Hey everyone, in case you didn't know, I run an SEO membership for online entrepreneurs so that way they can get the hands-on support they need to actually get their SEO up and running, to ask any questions that come up as they arise, and to get feedback on everything that they're doing for their SEO. And earlier this month, I ran a workshop where all of my members came together with me and we all looked at our Google search console together. We've discovered that if we don't take time and put it on the calendar and dedicate the time to looking at our Google search consoles, it's just not going to happen. It's one of those important but not urgent tasks that you think, oh, I should do that sometime. But without putting it on the calendar, it just completely falls off the task. List. So many of us got together, everyone started opening their Google search console, sharing them on Zoom, and that way they could get their feedback on what was happening in their Google search console and what are some ways that they could use that information in order to continue to get more great people into their websites. And I wanted to demonstrate something and I actually found something really cool that I want to show you in my Google search console because I found a new content idea that I wasn't even thinking about and I used one of my other favorite tools, Keywords Everywhere, in conjunction with Google search console in order to get even more detailed results. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use both Google search console and Keywords Everywhere to make some decisions about how to optimize your content on your website site to make the things that you've already created work better for you and maybe even to discover some new opportunities for content that you can create quickly that will rank really rapidly. Hi, I'm Meg Casebolt, the founder of Love at First Search, where we help online entrepreneurs to show up in search results and then turn those new readers into leads, subscribers, and sales. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to layer two of my favorite, very inexpensive keyword research tools on top of each other to get super focused information about ways that you can improve what you're already doing on your website and maybe even come up with some new content ideas. Now, before we take a look at my search console, I want to share something with you. Uh, that surprises people when I share it. And it's that I don't actually get that much search traffic. There's two reasons that I attribute this to. One is that SEO as an industry is incredibly competitive. The websites that talk about SEO know how to do SEO. So actually breaking into some of the results for SEO related keywords with SEO can be a little bit more competitive than a lot of other, other industries. The other reason why I don't get a ton of search traffic is that even though I've been teaching my clients and my students some of these tactics for the better part of a decade, I didn't actually start applying it to my own business in a really consistent way until 2021. So I am seeing a huge upswing in my own search traffic and the number of keywords, etc. But it was one of those situations where I had so many referrals that I would just rely on those instead of creating my own content and following my own best practices. One of those cobbler's kids have no shoes situations. So I just wanted to give you that fair warning. These numbers are not going to be huge. That's okay. You don't need to have millions and millions of people visiting your website in order to pull in the right people that will help you grow a successful business. So I just wanted to give that disclaimer before we get started. All right, so here we are in the Google Search Console performance report. If you want a refresher on Google Search Console, I will link to that video right here. But here's the basic idea of it. We have up here these four different buttons. You can turn on the total number of clicks. That's the people who go from Google to your website. The total number of impressions. That's the people who see your website in their search results, but may or may not click. The click through rate is the clicks divided by the impressions. That's the number of people who saw you and actually clicked through and then your average position for your entire site for all the keywords that you rank for. Now, I don't really think that average click through rate and average position for your entire website matter that much. So don't be put off by these numbers. The space where that gets really interesting is down here where we're actually looking at those keywords. So when people search for love at first search, 63% of them click on my website because I show up in position number one. Same with Meg Casebolt, 60% of people 
people who are looking for me come to my website because I show up number one for that. And then down here, this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting because these are people who don't necessarily know me. They're looking for things like Squarespace SEO tips, keywords everywhere on YouTube, uh, how to improve your first contentful paint. There are very specific keywords about SEO that are showing up here. And then also sometimes there are Brene Brown quotes or information about Roxanne Gay or things that I've mentioned in passing that have shown up in my content as well. So we can kind of ignore those things that aren't specific to SEO and really focus on the keywords that are relevant to the types of people I'm trying to attract and the problems that I'm trying to solve for them. And you can see that for a lot of these, you know, Squarespace SEO tips, we have 1300 people who searched for that. I'm ranking 36. So only one person actually made it to that fourth page of search results and clicked on my website. No surprise there. Who goes to the fourth page of search results? Way to go person who found me and clicked through. But the thing that I wanted to show you was this keyword. This keyword seemed very interesting to me when I was looking at it in the Google search console workshop that I was running and the keyword is keywords everywhere YouTube. So you guys know that I love the keywords everywhere tool. I've done multiple YouTube tutorials about how to use it, how to install it, how to use it on Google and how to use it on YouTube. But when I created that keywords everywhere for YouTube tutorial, I just rolled it into my full blog post about keywords everywhere. And I'm still ranking number 10 for it, even though it's sort of buried on that page. So when I looked at this and I saw that I'm ranking 10 for something that's really low down on that page that I don't have an emphasis on, I decided that I'm going to split that blog post into two posts where I have one post all about keywords everywhere and then another post all about keywords everywhere specifically for YouTube. So I'll come back and I'll update you on that once I've done that, how things are going to change in my search console. I interrupt this video to bring you an update from the future, the future, the future. We, about six weeks ago, after seeing that information in Google Search Console, we went in and we made an update to the website. We pulled the keywords everywhere for YouTube information and put it onto its own blog post over here. So you can see that we talk about the Keywords Everywhere plugin. We link back to the full review of Keywords Everywhere for Google. And then we have a full blog post here about how to use Keywords Everywhere on YouTube. It's pretty short, but it is very specific. You know, we use the term keywords everywhere for YouTube. Our permalink is keywords everywhere YouTube. And so since we created this about six weeks ago, we are already starting to see a change. You can see here that I have this term keywords everywhere YouTube. It looks about the same. And if you look at it this way, it's like the average position went from 10 before we made this change to 9.9. .9. So obviously not a huge shift in that way. But here's the interesting part. If I click on Keywords Everywhere YouTube, instead of it just being a keyword that shows up sometimes, you can see before we made this change in mid-October, every once in a while it would show up. You know, position 68 with two people who clicked through to that seventh page of search results. But then as soon as we started to make this adjustment and we made this new page, you can see I'm getting one, two, even up to four impressions a day, six impressions a day. and. I'm starting to get some clicks for this specific term of keywords everywhere YouTube. You can also see that my position for this term is anywhere between six and 10. And the reason that I'm doing better for this is that I now have two pages that show up in the search results for this. I have my keywords everywhere for a YouTube page and my keywords everywhere for Google page. And if I'm looking specifically at the traffic that is coming for the term keywords everywhere YouTube to the page keywords everywhere YouTube page, I'm getting, you know, sometimes I still rank in that 10th position, but sometimes I'm up to position six for that specific keyword. And some days nobody searches for it. So if you see these little jumps, that's because, you know, on the 28th, one person searched for it and I was in position seven. And on the 29th, one person searched for it and I was in the eighth position, but on the 28th, nobody searched for it. So if you see these little jumps, that just means that there was nobody searching for that term on that day. You can't control what people are searching for. So that's if I'm looking just for this specific exact keyword. But since I created that love it for search blog post just about keywords everywhere for YouTube, I'm also ranking for some new keywords related to not just keywords everywhere on YouTube, YouTube, but also 
uh, how to research keywords for YouTube and how to find keywords for YouTube. It's not specific to keywords everywhere. It is, you know, up here in the 40s, 60s in terms of search results. So I'm not getting any clicks for those, but it does give me some ideas about how I could do a post that explains how to do keyword research for YouTube and include links to keywords everywhere for YouTube and to Buddy and Google Trends and all of the different tools I've talked about. This might be a really good opportunity to create a post that's a little bit more general that links through to those specific topics. So even though I, you know, I've gotten these two clicks, it's nothing major, three clicks total between these two terms, but by creating more content that's more specific to these terms and that is really hyper targeting the things that people are looking for in a very nuanced way, I'm able to start getting more clicks and create more long-term traffic for these assets that I'm creating for my business. Now back to the original training. There is something else I wanna show you. Once I was looking at the information about this Keywords Everywhere YouTube, I was like, wow, I'm really doing quite well for this topic. I wonder what other Keywords Everywhere keywords I have. This is getting a little bit meta to talk about. So I'm gonna come over here to this Pages tab. I'm gonna click on just the Keywords Everywhere page. And what this will do is it'll just filter out. So that way, when I go back to the queries page, it will only show me things that people have searched for that showed the keywords everywhere blog posts that I have here. So while I was demonstrating this to my members, I took this extra step that I was looking at these keywords everywhere keywords, and I turned on keywords everywhere. I know we're getting really meta here about <laughs> keywords, about keywords everywhere, and then using keywords everywhere for more information, but here's what that looks like. Remember that we can use keywords everywhere on a lot of different sites. We can use it on not just Google and YouTube, but also Google Analytics, Google Trends, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, Answer the public. It has all these different places where you can turn on your keywords everywhere. And so I demonstrated to the people in my program that, hey, this is worth me creating more content about keywords everywhere because I only have one post and it's ranking number 21 for that keyword. It's showing up, you know, 21 and there's 60,000 people a month looking for it. So this helped me realize that I should create more content about keywords everywhere because there are so, so many people, you know, 4,000 a month looking for keywords everywhere Chrome extension. So I'm showing up 40th for that. I should definitely create more content on that because my one blog post is doing pretty well for being only one blog post. And then maybe I'll even create a blog post about how to do YouTube keyword research because of this blog post that's here, because I know that I can then also link to my blog post that I'm going to create about keywords everywhere for YouTube. And you can see down here that I have almost 500 keywords that are pointing to just this one post. So that shows me that there's so, so much volume of people who are curious about this tool. And I can check the numbers right here of how competitive is this? Are more people looking for this or not? I can actually just layer that amazing keywords everywhere data right on top of my Google search console to figure out how to talk more about keywords everywhere. So that was just a quick fun behind the scenes. Here's what's happening in my business and hopefully it gave you an idea of how you can use keywords everywhere on top of your Google search console, layering them like a sandwich so that you can not only see what keywords you're ranking for, but also see how many people are looking for that and how competitive that keyword is to know if it's worth optimizing for that term. If you thought this video was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. If you found anything really interesting in your Google search console, please share it in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. And I'll be back next week with even more tips to help you create content that attracts your ideal clients into your website. See you then.